Now, we know that football is a very violent, physical sport, and guys get hurt all the time, and guys play through injuries a lot. Uh, but in the case with these two Baltimore Ravens, they're really hurting right now, and they're playing through the injuries, but I almost feel like it's hurting the team more than it's helping them. And those two guys are Odell Beckham Jr. and Marcus Williams. Now, we know with Odell Beckham Jr., he was somebody that I, I was a little confused on whether he was hurt or not. I felt like he looked a little bit sluggish uh, when he had the ball in his hands, but I, I didn't know if it was... Just just because of the type of play and the type of passes that he caught since it wasn't any like goal routes it wasn't anything deep it wasn't anything where he had a lot of space uh, but I still felt like he looked uh, just a little bit slow um, and I was wondering like uh, is Odell Beckham Jr. slow or is he hurt like I, I don't know what his status is but Harbaugh pretty much confirmed that today because he said that he spoke with Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, about his slow start and he said he believes Odell Beckham Jr. is still being impacted by his ankle injury and he said he'd urge OBJ to be patient and knows the vet wide receiver will make plays and shout out to Jess Rebick for covering that and with Odell Beckham Jr. like I said before I don't think Odell Beckham Jr. was signed here to be a, a regular season wide receiver I think he was signed here for his experience in the playoffs and what he could do to just elevate not only the other receivers but just the entire offense especially in the playoffs and just so how he could elevate Lamar Jackson as a quarterback now we haven't got to see that too much at least from Odell Beckham Jr. We have seen Lamar Jackson elevated as a quarterback, but we haven't got to see him and Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, really go off yet. Uh, but I think that's a big part of the reason because Odell Beckham Jr. just simply been hurt. Uh, and even when he did come back, because he hadn't played since week two against the Bengals, he left that game uh, due to injury. But then he came back in this game against the Steelers, and he just he ended up leaving. Then he came back again, and he just never really got involved. But even when he did get involved, he just didn't look himself to me. So with Odell Beckham Jr., Look, y'all know how I feel. I want everybody to play. I want everybody to be healthy, though. And with Odell, he, he needs to be ready for the long run, man. He got to be ready for the long run. And I know, like, he's the only receiver on this past Sunday that didn't drop a pass. So I know nobody wants to sit Odell. But if he's hurting and if he can't be the Odell that the Baltimore Ravens signed, then I, I say that they need to sit him, in my opinion. And I know it's an unpopular opinion, but I, I don't think he should be out there until his ankle is all the way ready, like all the way, all the way ready. Now, somebody else who I was extremely excited about was Marcus Williams. And y'all know I loved Marcus Williams, loved him from last year, loved the signing, loved how he started off last year. Then, unfortunately, he went down to injury. Uh, but then this year, uh, he started off nice, but then he went down to injury like right away in the first game. And he came back. It was looking like it was, he was going to be out for the season or out for a really long time. But he came back super early. So I'm all hyped like, whoa, we got Marcus Williams back already. And they held him out for like a game or two, even though he had practice. But then he played against these Steelers. And I was like, all right, let's go, baby. But it seems like it was a, a mistake for the Baltimore Ravens to have him out there. And he was favoring his arm. I'm not sure if it was his pec that was bothering or, or his arm or, or a bit of both. But he just was not the Marcus Williams that we know and that we're used to. So another unpopular opinion, I think unless Marcus Williams is all the way right, you can't, you can't have no safety. That's the last line of defense. You can't have your safety favoring his arm or favoring his pec. You, you can't have him do that in the middle of a game because they're going to pick on him. They're going to take advantage of him. And especially if teams see that, like if we see that, then they see that. So they're going to take advantage of that. And look, Geno Stone, he can do his thing. Geno Stone can hold it down. So I would much rather, even though I want, like I said, same with OBJ, I want him out there. I want to see that boy playing. I want to see Marcus Williams out there balling. I want to see both of them going off. But I, I do not want to see them, in my opinion, I wouldn't want to see them out there playing if they're hurting a the team more than helping. So hopefully, hey, hopefully in London, maybe the air is different over there and both of them will be good to go. They'll be ready. Maybe they drink some tea or something, have some crumpets and they'll be straight. But if they're not good to go, I would much rather them wait it out and just we'll, we'll see you down the road later on in the season. Now, um, somebody else who had a little scared today who we thought might have been hurt uh, was Patrick Queen. They said Patrick Queen that it was slippery at practice and Patrick Queen slipped. They said the trainers ran over there and checked on him. But he was okay, and he got right back up and started practicing again. So I was like, all right, PQ, we love you. We need you. Keep doing your thing. Keep doing what you've do, been doing. He's been balling in the States. It's time for him to go ball overseas too. Um, but Jadavian Clowney, somebody who's like – Jadavian Clowney has been like a, a weird kind of baller because he's been a baller that got the nice handles. 
He got the crossover moves. He got a pretty jumper, but the ball just doesn't go in the basket with Jadavian Clowney because he, he can do everything. He does everything right, but finish. And hopefully this week he can finish. But something that he didn't even start this week yet was practice because John Harbaugh said that he was out of practice because he said that Jadavian Clowney and a couple of guys were sick. So maybe they had something in the water, so I don't know what it was, but hopefully they can feel better. Uh, they can get all cleaned up, and they can be good to go tomorrow, and then they, they be out there at the game on Sunday. Um, now, speaking of sick, all of us Ravens fans were sick on Sunday when we saw a drop after drop after drop after drop after drop. Uh, but L Lamar Jackson, he put it perfectly. And J James, Hen James and Hensley put it perfectly, actually. And he said that um, Lamar Jackson gave his receivers a vote of confidence on Wednesday after they combined for the worst the worst pass catching performance in the NFL this season. Oof. What a, a tough headline. It's true. It's all facts because it was ugly. But Lamar Jackson, he told him, like, hey, I believe our guys are locked in right now and they're going to be better. And I know there's been a lot of conversation amongst Ravens fans saying, oh, Lamar Jackson, he needs to step it up as a leader. He needs to step it up vocally. He needs to pick up the pace. He needs to get in these guys' faces. And he need to do all. And I think it's, it's a weird spot to be in. Because it was expected, and it is expected, that Lamar Jackson is uh, going to be more of a vocal leader this year. They talked about it all offseason. Especially, I mean, he's the face of the franchise. He, they, they paid him that huge contract for a reason because he's the guy. Uh, so, yeah, I would expect him to take on a more of a leadership role, but not every leader leads the same. Uh, you can lead by example. You can lead vocally. You can do a bit of both. You can be one of them rah, rah, rah leaders. You can be one of them more calm leaders. It all just depends on your personality. Uh, so Lamar, it is Lamar Jackson's responsibility, though, to, to just get these guys right, man, to make sure their head's in the game, during the game, and if stuff starts to get a little shaky, hey, go talk to them. Hey, no, we, we got this. We got this. And I'm sure he does that already because there's only so much that we can see on the broadcast view. Uh, we, we can't see every single time that Lamar Jackson is on the sideline with his players and whatnot, talking to them with the coaches and whatnot and talking to them. We can't see everything. So I can't sit up here and say, oh, man, Lamar Jackson is just such a bad leader. No. But it's, it's important that they, they get this thing right. Like the Baltimore Ravens mentality, it has to get a lot better because they got, every, they got all, everything physically that they, they, that they need despite all the injuries and stuff. They have everything physically, but it's the mentality that's just been bugging them and having them tripping out a lot of times. But we'll talk about that more later. Now, the Ravens injury report, their practice report uh, for today uh, we did talk about Jadavian Clowney, how he missed practice with sickness. Adolfo Away and Geno Stone, they did not practice. We were just talking about Geno Stone like, man, we want Marcus Williams to sit a little bit if he's still hurting. Uh, but G if Geno Stone's out, then that puts even more pressure on Marcus Williams to go out there and play. So we'll see. Hopefully with Geno Stone, it ain't nothing crazy. But maybe he's just a little sick too. Hopefully that's it, and then he could be back tomorrow, hopefully. But anyway, um, Odell Beckham Jr., he practiced. He was limited, though. But he did practice. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, Pat McCary, and Morgan Moses was good. They returned to practice. Uh, Pat McCary had left the game on Sunday, and he did not return. Daniel Falele had took over. Morgan Moses was obviously out of that game. But both of those two being back at practice is a wonderful thing because the Baltimore Ravens offensive line, it, it can't get no worse, man. They, they need all the help that they can get. They need all the healthy bodies that they can possibly have because it's rough. It's really rough. And... I was looking at, somebody put it on Twitter, uh, I think yesterday. They were talking about, oh, oh, the, the four best pass rushers in the NFL right now. And then somebody was like, oh, the Ravens got to go up against all the four of these guys later on in the season. I think it was TJ Watt, and we're going to have to play him again. It was Miles Garrett. It was Nick Bosa. And I forgot who the fourth one was. I know somebody, one of y'all will remember for sure. But I'm thinking, oh, man, <laughs> in our offensive line, how they been so far? Yikes. That could get ugly, but hopefully it doesn't, but it could get a little nasty. Uh, but somebody who practiced in full, um, who had been on an injury report and not, isn't, still, isn't officially back yet on the roster, uh, but it's Keaton Mitchell. So shout out to Keaton Mitchell. Um, he should be activated any day now, really, any day now. But with him practicing in full, that lets us know that before this 21-day window is up, Keaton Mitchell will be back on the Baltimore Ravens active roster. Now, I would not expect him to have this, like, crazy major role or anything like that. I know he would love it, but right now that number one spot at running back is like a 1A, 1B type of thing with Gus Edwards and Justice Hill. The Baltimore Ravens, they got a weird way of using him, though, because Gus Edwards, he be doing his thing. Justice Hill be doing his thing, too, but Justice Hill... He'll randomly have like a fumble here, there, something. It's like, oh, man. But then they won't back. They, it seemed like they won't go back to Gus after that either. It's like, Justice Hill will fumble, and then they'll take it out on Gus. Be like, we ain't going back to you either. But Ravens got to work all that stuff out. Again, with the Baltimore Ravens, their biggest issue is not physical. The biggest issue is here. 
is here. It's all mental stuff with the Baltimore Ravens. So once they get that figured out, ooh, they'll be unstoppable.